All right, y'all, what's up? Alan up here, Digital Noise. Thanks for tuning back in. It's been, I don't know, maybe two weeks since my last video, and it was about announcing that I had just purchased the Sony A7R 3 Guess what? I have gotten it. Yes, yes. Oh, it feels so good. You know how it is when you are waiting so long, you get something, you buy it, you know you have to wait. It's so beautiful. Oh, so good. But I have it in my hands right now, fresh from the shipping truck. I am super excited to unbox this thing for y'all. What I really wanna talk about is just to show you guys who are getting this, or thinking about getting this, about exactly what you're gonna get um, out of the box when you order it. I'm also gonna go over some accessories that I purchased with this camera, especially if you are a Canon shooter, um, particularly, I mean, or you could be a Nikon shooter, it doesn't matter. Um, but it, particularly for this video, if you are a Canon shooter, which I am, I'm slowly making a transition over to the Sony camera system. And I wanted to help you know, everyone out who is a Canon shooter will sort of adjust and be prepared for the switch. And I'll talk about the little things that I got uh, alongside of this camera and also future things that I might get um, for this camera. That way I can make a smooth transition and uh, not be um, bogged down and concerned with some of the purchases I may need to make in the future uh, to make sure that I have a smooth transition with uh, this camera switching from uh, Canon. Let's go ahead and start. Here's the box in all its glory. Pop open the tab. That's gonna be awesome. So basically what you get out of the box is cardboard. Still, I don't know what you get all of your manuals, right? You get uh, register to win something. You get the A7R3 manual in French. Pull in the American version. Uh, Sony, blah, blah, blah. Uh, more manual stuff, yada, yada, yada. Other stuff, warranty, right? Warranties are important. Warranties are important, right? Um, and you get some awesome Japanese literature in manual form as well. Cool, I'm gonna up the tab a little bit further. Uh, first thing I see is the A7 strap. Not gonna really use this, but I will keep this as a backup. Um, I'm not gonna chuck this behind me, so you guys don't have to worry about that. You get an AC cable, an AC adapter. You also get the new battery that it comes with. It also comes with a Type-C USB cable for um, data transfer super fast because it is type C um, and I'm not sure I think this can also charge the camera as well if you're not using the uh, battery charger um, correct me if I'm wrong please but uh, it does come with that now let's get to the actual camera chuck this thing no, I'm just kidding let's not chuck that it's in let's take that out this is not the camera but this is the camera so here it is the Sony a7r3 uh, or mark 3 however you like to say it I just want to talk about the difference between this one and the a7R2 and why I decided to go with this versus the a7R2. I wanted to go with the a7R3 um, because of all the different uh, capabilities that this camera has that it adopts from the A9. And um, that beautiful marriage of those two cameras put together, you get this baby. And me as a Canon shooter, like I said in my last video, there's a lot of things that I believe Canon was lacking and I wanted to uh, just, you know, jump over and see what the, the Sony is all about and test it out for myself. Depending on how much I like this camera uh, will determine if I want to keep my Mark IV, which I have right here in Mark IV. Just look at, I mean, this has a battery grip on it, so. Uh, will I get a battery grip for the, for the A7R III? I don't know. I like, like I said, I like how small this is. Um, but even if I added the battery grip, it'd still be just a bit tinier than the uh, Mark IV. So it, I'll, what I really want to talk about is the differences between the A7R III and the 5D Mark IV. So if you are, if you're a Canon shooter and you want to upgrade, let's say you have the Mark III, or you have the Mark II. Wow, if you have the Mark II. Let's say you have the Mark III. Let's say you're just a Canon shooter and you're thinking about switching to Sony. You want to get a, a high-end professional uh, mirrorless or DSLR, whatnot. One great thing about the A7R3 versus the 5D Mark IV is the in-camera stabilization. So there is a, uh, 
the sensor is actually stabilized within the camera body itself. So whenever I'm moving, the sensor has some sort of gyro, um, I'm assuming, that's counterbalancing whenever you move. So that way you can attach any lens on it and it would still be stabilized. The Mark IV does not have that. With the 5D Mark IV, the, with the Canon lenses, if you're a Canon shooter, you should already know that the uh, lens itself I have right here is the 7200 f2.8 IS. There is a gyro in here and whatnot that is moving around so that way uh, it counterbalances and whenever you move, it, it reduces shake and you don't see that in the image itself. Also, another great thing with uh, the a7R 3 that they've incorporated is the uh, dual SD card slots, which are right here. So the 5D Mark IV also has that as well. It boasts an CF card slot right there and an SD card slot right there as well. Uh, yeah, that's some of the, that's two. That's one great thing that the uh, Sony got, and, that, and that's one reason why I bought this because it does have that capability. If you want to do redundant recording or um, on the camera itself, uh, so that way you can write to two cards if one fails. Uh, that's one reason that was actually holding me back from this one because if I shoot a wedding, I don't want to miss any of my images, which is why I bought the Mark IV in the higher-end camera, so that way, with weddings and everything, um, I can always feel safe when uh, I'm trying to make sure I have all my images and something, you know, like the card fails, I'll always be rest assured that uh, everything will still go smoothly. The A7R III, as you already know, is 42 megapixels, and the Canon is 30. You get 12 more megapixels, which, um, if you're not into resolution that much, that shouldn't be a big difference because 12 more megapixels, you're, you're cutting it close. I mean, if you want to print really large images or if you're looking at these pictures on a huge screen, you're, you're not really going to tell a difference. If you're, especially for my clientele or the things I like to shoot, I'm posting on uh, Instagram and social media sites all the time. You can't really tell the difference because people are looking at my images either on their phone or on their screen. But for my wedding clients, if they want to print out something that's giant, like a 16 by 20 or even a 20 by 30, it, it, I mean, with this thing, it, they're not going to lose any quality when they print really big. So, um, yeah, I mean, what's, what is great though, for all you shooters out there, especially for myself, what is great is it gives you room to shoot wider and crop. What I mean by that is let's say you're in the middle of a shoot and you don't quite know if you should zoom in camera to get the composition you want. Let's say you, you could look good wide and it could look good zoomed in. 42 megapixels is great because it gives you the opportunity to shoot wider. And if you like the shot, wider, great. But if you don't, you want you wish it was a little more zoomed in, you can crop in and post, and the images are gonna still look great. It's not gonna look any different. Like I said, you just get a little bit more with the A7R 3 than you do with the Mark IV. So let's talk about the most important reason and the main capability of this camera over the Mark IV, uh, of which why I switched, or why I could be switching over to the A7R 3 from my Canon 5D Mark IV. Let's talk about eye autofocus. Um, it's amazing. I'm just gonna put that out there. From the, what I've seen with the a7R2 and with the, even with the a6500, eye autofocus is great, especially with the type of photography that I'm going for, which is uh, modeling and fashion photography. Uh, what I've noticed with my Mark III, or what I've noticed with my Mark IV is that it can't keep up with the type of focus I needed to, especially when during shoots I'm having my model move really fast, spin around, walk back and forth. Um, I need the eyes to be in focus at all times, especially if I'm shooting a portrait, if I'm shooting more advertising or clothing. It, that's not really important, but I would like to have eye autofocus for the face because we all look at the faces when we're you know, looking at magazine or anything. Um, and that's just really important. And just the capability of this eye autofocus is gonna be fantastic and it's gonna be astonishing. And I can't wait to test this out um, for you guys. So let's talk about some of the accessories that I got with the a7R 3 uh, One of the things that I did get for the camera 
because it does 10 frames a second shooting and it does record 4K at uh, 60 frames a second, um, I needed a new memory card to go with it. So I decided to get one of the, uh, or one of Sony's fast, three, what is it, 300 megabytes a second read and 299 megabytes a second write. I did purchase, if it focuses, the 128 gigabyte version um, because there may be moments where I'm doing a model photo shoot and I want to be able to capture the model moving and not miss a single emotion or pose or facial expression that the model is giving. I want to be able to shoot all of it at 10 frames a second. I want it to be able to write super fast. And because it's 42 megapixels, I wanted to make sure that I had enough memory and not have to worry about switching cards. So I did get the 128 gigabyte uh, card um, for, the cam uh, for the camera. Uh, this card was about $230, so it ain't no joke. Um, you don't have to get the 128 gigabyte version. You can get a 64. I don't recommend anything below 64. Uh, that way you can be rest assured you don't have to switch. You don't have to worry about taking the time to switch out your memory card. Also, what I got, because I do have lots of Canon glass, I don't have any nice Sony native lenses yet. I got the Sigma MC11 adapter uh, for Sony to adapt Canon glass. Um, I can show you how that works really quick. Basically, you take off the cap like so. You take off the back, the back cap of the adapter and you just find the two points, the white dots, and then you just marry them together and you turn and then you hear a click and it's on. So, um, you just open that up and let's say I want to adapt my 50 millimeter uh, 1.2 Canon uh, lens on the camera and you just do the same thing, find the red dot, find the red dot, marry it together, uh, turn, click, and then you have a beautiful marriage between Sony and Canon. Isn't that awesome, y'all? I mean, I, I think that's great. And I do like the red ring matches the red of the camera. I mean, isn't that just cool, guys? Yeah, uh, mm, silly of me. But it's, it's pretty dope. Um, and I really can't wait to test the eye autofocus with the Canon glass through the uh, Sony system and see how well that can work out. If it works really well, then I might not even need native lenses. I, I am pretty sure I'm gonna get at least one or two native lenses for the, um, for the Sony. Um, but uh, other things that I might get is, um, you know, like I said, native lenses, an extra battery. I might get a battery grip, just depending on how much battery this camera actually uses. I will put a link to uh, the items that I got for the Sony in the um, description box down below. So you can check that out. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. I will be having two videos coming out, which is a real world review of me in this camera. Uh, I'm going to be going, I'm, I'm gonna be going to uh, the mountains to go snowboarding and I'm gonna be vlogging as well. So be sure to like and subscribe so that way you can keep up with some of my other stuff. Um, but I'll also be doing a real world review on this camera um, and testing out you know, its high speed shooting, testing out its eye autofocus, testing out its dynamic range, testing out its battery life, everything like that. Uh, and then also the video after that will be a comparison between this and the uh, 5D Mark IV, basically putting them both to the test and seeing which one would be better in terms of modeling and fashion. So be sure to like and subscribe hit that bell, that way you can see these videos when they do come out in the next few weeks. And thanks for subscribing, y'all. I really appreciate it trying to get out there. I'm trying to shoot as much as I can every day, all day, and, and share it with you guys. So thanks a lot. See you in the next video.